The thing with chronic pain is that the longer you experience it, the more it teaches you not to move. The less you move, the better it feels until you move, and then it hurts more. This process is called the fear avoidance cycle, the process where we get scared to move, so we don't move, which causes more pain, which causes us to be afraid of moving. We can find ourselves in an emotional swirl and kind of paralyzed. And since we can't do what we want to do, we either do nothing or we try to do what we're used to and end up hurting ourselves again. And we have to stop that trend, that cycle. Hello, fellow fitness enthusiasts. I'm Sin with Mind Your Matters, redefining fitness podcast at SAS Factor Fitness. Here at Mind Your Matters at SAS Factor Fitness, we're a growing community of people, adventurers, fitness enthusiasts, including first responders, former athletes, and weekend warriors who are seeking to get reconnected with themselves in order to restore fitness after injury, illness, or other life events had other plans and to achieve optimal fitness goals. In this community, we believe that fitness is not just about the numbers, whether on a people or a food scale, a tape measure, or a simple energy input and output. We believe at the core, fitness is about total well-being, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So we talk about topics in all the areas we truly believe are connected to fitness, including mindset. We can't get physically fit until we adjust our mindset and our relationship with ourselves so that we can be successful in our efforts. So today we're talking about chronic pain, how it affects our minds, emotions, bodies, and thus our ability to stick with fitness plans. Now, this is such a packed topic and we could talk about it for hours, but I'm not going to do that to you today. We have plenty of time for more podcasts on the subject. But for today, our discussion is going to be limited to the effect that chronic pain has on the brain and how that translates into how we feel emotionally as well as physically and how that changes how we show up in other areas of our lives, which ultimately can interfere with our ability to stick with the fitness plan. So just so you know, my pain has been flaring up some over the last few days and I've been dealing with that. And so this morning, I was looking at memes geared towards dealing with chronic pain. And honestly, I was looking for something inspirational or funny for myself. And, you know, I thought I might pass it along to maybe brighten someone else's day who might also be feeling similarly. And can I just tell you, I was shocked and saddened to see that the overwhelming majority of memes were kind of negative, like pretty scolding and angry. You know, I mean... I experienced chronic pain, and I have for more than a decade, so I totally get it. I get when we feel like our bodies are betraying us and that somehow they hate us and that people don't understand the issue. They say things that are dismissive of the pain we're in, give surface-level, non-medical opinions about how to fix an oftentimes largely unfixable issue, right? You know what I'm talking about, but do we have to be so angry about all of it? I have to ask. You know, and is any of that anger helping us anyway? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for feeling what you're feeling. And if that's anger, okay. But we don't have to live there, you know. And honestly, living in that anger isn't doing any of us any favors. Just like thinking that just because our issue might be unfixable, it can't improve and be much, much better, or in some cases, close to non-existent. Because you'd be surprised what can happen when we tweak just a few things, but I'll get into that a little later. So yeah, I wanted to talk with you about all of it. It was weighing on my heart because I know how isolating and frustrating living with chronic pain can be. And it doesn't have to be that way. Having community and support with people who understand can go a long way. The choices we make can either put us in community or further isolate us. I mean, honestly, chronic pain is no joke, right? It can imprison the strongest of us, the most active of us, those of us who had been incredibly resilient our entire lives and thought nothing but nothing could ever stop us from being active at the level we wish to be 
And that generally was beyond many people we knew at that age, whatever our age was. You know, we were out there doing the thing and loving it. Those of us who felt being active was simply a matter of sucking it up and making it a priority. You know who you are. Trust me, I was one of those people. So, you know, let me know. Who's been there? Did you feel like nothing? Nothing could ever change your relationship to physical activity. Did you feel like anything could? Because I surely didn't. I loved it. I mean, I still do. But it's a whole other ball game now. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about. Raise your hand over here. Because, you know, sometimes now it can be a struggle. It can be a struggle just to get out of bed and take a shower because maybe your feet are hurting or your neck is stiff. You know, who else has had days where it was a tough time standing up, just putting on pants because your ankle, hip, knee, lower back, whatever, wouldn't hinge properly? Or maybe even bending over to tie your shoes, hurt your back, your wrist or your fingers. And after going through all that and finally getting dressed, if we even got that far, the thought of cooking or running errands made us wince and want to lay back down. Because trust me, I've done laps around my house before and got right back into the bed because the pain got to be too much. You know what I'm talking about? It can really be a tough place to be. Especially knowing that though the idea of spending time with friends or doing something active and adventurous sounds fun, and that errand running and preparing meals we know is a necessity, the thought of actually doing those things and the pain that would come with the effort to get there while we were there or the pain we would feel for hours or days afterward essentially convinces us not to even leave the house. Come on now, tell me if I'm lying. Because yeah, I've been there too. The truth is, once again, we don't have to be there. But when we're there, it's because chronic pain changes our brain. Over time, the brain's pain receptors begin to become overactive and more sensitive to sensations and signaling feelings of pain. So even when no actual pain is present, the brain is telling the body that it is. And we can't tell the difference. You know, all we know is that our brains are warning us that pain is present and that we should be wary of what we're doing, maybe even stop, or I don't know, how about not do it at all? As a result, we begin to engage in less movement, which leads to muscle weakness, increased inflammation in the body, and can lead to anxiety, trouble falling or staying asleep, and the potential for depression. All of this is stuff that increases the brain's sensitivity to and signaling of pain. And it's a miserable cycle to be in, I know. I've spent some time there and was desperate to get out and wasn't able to find things that seemed to work. I was stuck on old methods of, of exercise and the types of exercises that I was doing that I used to do before that used to work wonders for me only now cause pain. And often they aggravated old or created new injuries. And I was frustrated because anyone I talked to couldn't understand my situation and either advised me to just give in and accept where I was, that it was never going to get better. And I was going to be in pain because, you know, we're getting older and that's just how it was. Or they tried to convince me to do traditional fitness ac exercise activities that I knew were going to make things worse. It was really a tough time for sure. And I don't know if any of you else have been out there on that cycle, but it's not a great place to be. But I'll tell you what, I finally found some activities that I could do that didn't hurt very much, if at all. So I started doing them. And interestingly enough, they were activities that I and most of my athletic friends usually turned our noses up and refused to do, especially in our younger years. You know what I'm talking about. You know those exercises that you just aren't going to do because they don't get you to break a sweat and they don't feel like you're doing anything. But I'm going to tell you what, those were the exercises and the activities that helped me to regain muscle strength and flexibility so that eventually, within a few short months, I could do activities like hiking, running, and all those things, which I had been unable to do for several years prior. Years. 
The thing with chronic pain is that the longer you experience it, the more it teaches you not to move. The less you move, the better it feels until you move, and then it hurts more. In that situation, usually you start using more medication, that increases, and the mixture of inactivity and increased medication can create an atmosphere for other things to grow and thrive, like trouble sleeping, fatigue, anxiety, and depression, and that anger that we were talking about earlier. This process is called the fear avoidance cycle, the process where we get scared to move, so we don't move, which causes more pain, which causes us to be afraid of moving. It's a terrible cycle. So how do we get out of it? In a nutshell, exercise, or really any kind of body movement. Now, let's be honest. We're all familiar with the benefits of exercise. I mean, this is a community of people who prior to injury thrived on exercise and the way it made us feel. All of us here are fitness enthusiasts. We've been involved in it. We understand it. We love it and we crave it. So we know exercise has benefits for us. For us, It's just that the benefits at this point have stopped outweighing the price that we have to pay with regard to pain. So we're going to have to try to tip that scale the other direction again. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to get away from how we've been trained to view exercise. Because we've been trained to have a warped sense of what exercise is truly. Like, for us, the typical idea of exercise usually is putting on some special outfit of sorts. You know what I'm talking about. Whether it's shorts and a t-shirt or yoga wear, swimsuits, cycling pants, your special shoes for wrestling or hiking or running or cycling or whatever. And then we go out there and we hit the pool, the trails, the gym, we get on a bike or something similar. And we put in our hour and we work up a sweat and we punish our body so it hurts so good, pushing our limits and working until exhaustion. And... That's how we knew exercise was happening. It makes us feel good, it gets our endorphins pumping, and it gets our heart rate up. Except now we can't do that. Our bodies are unable to get to or sustain that level of exertion. And that can make us feel defeated and frustrated, angry, sad, all of the emotions about it. We can find ourselves in an emotional swirl and kind of paralyzed. And since we can't do what we want to do, we either do nothing Or we try to do what we're used to and end up hurting ourselves again. And we have to stop that trend, that cycle. You know, I know what I'm talking about here. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about here because most of us have probably been on that cycle. You know, where you go out there, you try to exercise, you get hurt, you don't do anything, you get frustrated, you feel terrible, you decide to get out and do it again and you try to do exercise and you hurt yourself. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I was on that cycle for about a good eight years, and it was very, very frustrating. But what I learned eventually is that our bodies only know movement. They don't know whether we went to the gym to lift dumbbells or whether we're out lifting up our children, whether we walked on the treadmill on incline two for 20 minutes or took a walk around the neighborhood while chatting with a good friend. And our bodies certainly don't know whether we're doing squats and deadlifts or we're out gardening, doing yard work, and other things. What our body knows is that it's moving. And what we have to do is get out of the mindset of what exercise looks like, that it looks a certain way. Exercise is simply body movement. And any movement that can get your body in alignment, keeping proper posture while standing or sitting and through a range of motion, working joints and muscles together the way they should is a good thing. Any type of movement that does that is a good thing. And that's pretty much anything we can do in a functional way. Our bodies were meant to move, and they're happy when they do, and very unhappy when they don't. Finding ways to move rather than doing some specific exercise is key. Getting our bodies to move again can change the way the brain functions and remap itself to stop sending pain signals when pain is not present. Yay, hallelujah, because of course, who wants that? (laughs) No one. But what the good thing is, is that it's still going to signal real pain. It's just not anymore going to act as a mechanism to prevent us from moving. It's not going to make us scared of moving by creating pain when there isn't any there. And this process of getting in or out of a pain cycle um, by retraining your brain is called neuroplasticity in pain management. 
It's crazy, right? Who would have thought that things that we consider to be easy could actually help us and lead to better outcomes in training? Okay, because you can't see me right now, but I'm totally using air quotes around the word easier. The mind-body connection is essential to restoring fitness and making lasting changes. Changing mindset and implementing a new system of body movement can prepare your body for proper movement in more traditional activities with less pain. And the less pain we experience, the more we will want to move. And the more our brain will prompt us to move, rather than prompting us to remain still. For more information on fitness, mindset, and forming new habits to create small shifts in perspective and behaviors that produce big results, check out my blog at mindyourmatters-sff.com. You can also find me on Instagram at sasfactorfitness or at mindyourmatters underscore sff for information on injury prevention, nutrition, and other conversations related to health and wellness. In the meanwhile, this is Sin at Sass Factor Fitness reminding you to mind your matters.